So how do I create a new subdomain on my web server? And what do I mean by that? Well, okay, we already own the domain name robo, robobunnyattack.com. What if I wanted something like, you know, sandbox.robobunnyattack.com or whatever.robobunnyattack.com. Um, the subdomain is just that 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 word, that part that's before the domain. So in this case, actually, if you want to see dreamhost.com, the subdomain part would be this, panel.dreamhost.com. Um, you only really pay once to, to register the domain name, um, but you can have as many subdomains as you want, um, which can really extend the usage of your domain. Um, now, I say that you can have as many subdomains as you want. It really depends on your hosting plan. Uh, for, the, for the shared web hosting plan I have through DreamHost, um, there's actually no limit to the number of subdomains you can set up, which is really handy, and I like that a lot. So let's go ahead and create a new subdomain. So what we're going to do to do that is, again, handy little toolbox. I've logged into the DreamHost graphic control panel, by the way, as you can see here. And handy little toolbox right here. Second item from the top says Manage Domains. This is where we can view, edit, add domains and their services. And this indeed is what we want to do. So we're going to click on Manage Domains. So we're clicking on that. And you'll see here, this gives you a bit of an overview of what is currently running on your account. And you can see that here's my domain, my main domain, robobunnyattack.com. And you'll see that I've already set up one subdomain here called sandbox.robobunnyattack.com. I want to set up a new one. And so how do I do that? Fortunately, there's a nice big button right here that says add new domain or subdomain. And so I'm going to click it and I'm going to show you how to do this. Now, there's a few choices we need to do here. The first thing we need to do is we need to write the domain name. And I see they say here subdomains are OK. This is exactly what we want to do. We want to set up a test subdomain. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to call it test.robobunnyattack.com. Okay, and so this is going to be test, it's just the subdomain part, robobunnyattack.com, we already own that domain. So this is what we're going to set up. Um, there's a few choices we need to make here. Um, DreamHost gives you the option, do you want the www in your URL? And when I'm setting up subdomains, I always remove them. And the reason for that is because if you don't remove it, uh, you end up with these ridiculously long URLs and you know this is long enough to begin with we don't need to add that extra www so the way this is going to work is if someone types in test.robobunnyattack.com in their their browser it's going to bring you to our new subdomain even if they put www.test.robobunnyattack.com like that in the browser it's going to redirect it to test.robobunnyattack.com so either way works we end up with nice cleaner looking Earls, at least in my humble opinion. Okay, a couple more choices we need to make here. See this under Users, Files, and Path. We need to choose which user this domain is going to be run under. And what does that mean? Okay. Um, in the last screencast, we set up a new shell user account or an FTP user account. This is the user that has access to uploading and downloading files on this particular subdomain that you're setting up. Um, I already have a user called RoboBunny, but I actually wanted to assign this particular subdomain to my test user that I just created. So in order to do that, it's pretty simple. I just click on the button, chose test user. How simple is that? Um, we're going to leave web directory like that, okay? And we're going to see what this, this looks fine to me, and we're going to see what that looks like when we actually activate it. A uh, couple extra choices here that are just going to make life simple for us down the road. Um, I want to choose PHP mode uh, because I might want to actually install uh, WordPress or Drupal down the line on this particular subdomain. And so I'm actually going to go ahead and pick the latest version, uh, a later version of PHP, PHP 5.3, and I'm going to go ahead and select fast. CGI. Why? I don't know, because we're robo bunnies. We're fast. It's all good. Okay, extra web security. Yes, we leave this checked on because we love extra web security. Why not? Um, I'm going to leave everything else as is. Okay, we're going to ignore all the rest of the stuff. We're going to ignore all this. We can come back to this at a later point in time. Uh, but before I click fully host this domain, let's just do a quick review of the stuff we did. We chose our subdomain. We popped it in here. We decided to remove the www just to make our subdomains a little bit shorter. We chose the appropriate user. Okay, in this case, it was our test user. Uh, we left that as is. We changed the PHP mode to be PHP 5.3.x fast CGI. All right. We made sure that extra web security was checked and then we ignore everything else and we go ahead and click the button. We hit fully host this domain. And what we're waiting for now on the next page is a green 
window, as you see right here, again, success, hurrah, test.robobunnyattack.com has been added to our hosting system. Now, let's read this. It says, since this takes some time for the new DNS information to propagate, it may take up to a few hours for your new subdomain to start working. In reality, I've had subdomains start working within a minute or two. Uh, and then sometimes it does take a few hours. So if it's not working right away, again, take a break, go make yourself a coffee, okay? Just go relax. If it's not working, like by the end of the day, something is up and you might wanna look into that or maybe start all over or something. But in most cases, it's always gonna be working. Now is a good time for us to go back to that text file that we had started and we can start adding a little bit more information here. We can say the, um, subdomain for this particular user is going to be test.robobunnyattack.com. Or uh, no, yes. Yes, that's exactly what we just set up. And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Um, so has this set up, has this been set up yet? Let's check. I'm going to click just on the manage domain page again just to see if it shows up. And look at that. It's shown up down here. That's a good sign. Okay, so now we've actually, the system is recognizing that we've got this new subdomain right here. Um, we can go ahead and visit this. Okay, I can actually just, uh, well, I'll just start a new tab and I'll actually just try typing it in. Robobunnyattack.com. I'm going to see first of all whether it's set up. Look at that. It's been set up. So see what I mean? That was only a couple minutes. Now, this might not be set up all over the world, but it's set up for us, and that's what we care about right now, and that's cool. Uh, a little shortcut, if you don't feel like typing that in, you can always just click the visit button there, and it just brings you to the exact same page. Um, pretty neat. So we know it's up, we know it's working. Last but not least, let's actually now see what this looks like when we try to log in via FTP. I'm going to go, and I'm going to start CyberDuck, and uh, I'm going to log in using the... FTP information, the shell user account information here that we create. And by the way, I know I shouldn't really be using FTP and shell interchangeably. They are different things. Um, but in this case, our user account has access to everything. So that's why I've been using the, the words interchangeably, even though they really do mean different things. Okay. Uh, but we can use our shell user account to also, in this case, access everything via FTP. Let's go ahead and open a new connection. And here, the server name, again, you don't actually have to write the whole subdomain. All we need to do, again, is just write the domain itself, robobunnyattack.com. That, for our purposes, is our server. Port we leave as is. Username in this case, again, I'm just going to cut and paste this from here, our username right here. We've seen this before. We just did this in the last screencast. Let's go ahead and Log in using our crazy long password. I'm going to click the connect button. And there we go. And see, we see something a bit new now. Last time that we logged in, before we had set up our subdomain, all we saw was just the logs and mail di um, directories here. But now we have a new directory here called test.robobunnyattack.com. Um, let's go ahead and double click on this so we can move into this directory and see what's going on here. We currently have three items in here. We've got these two favicon graphic icons here, and then we have this quickstart.html page. Well, that's what this is right here. This is the quick start page. And this is just the default page that DreamHost sets up for you. So this is fantastic. So we see now that we are able to log in to our our actual subdomain. And by the way, if you were to upload, you know, if you were to delete this quick start page and add like a new index.html page, that's exactly what would load up here. So you're online. You're like publishing stuff. It's as easy as that. Okay, um, that's all I have. I hope that that was helpful. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.